This episode of the Party Loaded Podcast is proudly sponsored by Audible.com. Check out their awesome catalogue of audiobooks with over 180,000 titles to choose from. And be sure to grab a free audiobook on us and support the show by visiting audibletrial.com slash endgame. Let's party. It is time. Time for video games. Time for fun. Time to party. It is time for Party Loaded. It is Party Loaded episode 89 for Wednesday, the 2nd of August. Uh, my name is Luke Ritalik, and it's also time to introduce some radical hardcore gamers. Jam, do you know any? <laughs> oh, very funny, man. So funny. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, I'm out. He has the lols. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here and I'm sick. Yeah, Jam's Appreciate not doing so that. good tonight. <laughs> I'm you, need, sound hilarious. you need some radical hardcore cough medicine or something. You're not sounding yeah. great. Yep. Yeah. But you're powering on, nonetheless. Ollie is here too. I'm here in spirit. Spirit if not in mind. <laughs> I'm very distracted. Yes. You should shut that shit down. And Mimo is here too. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's not porn. Don't worry, guys. No, no, wow, no. Wow, now we all think it's porn. Yeah, that's hey, it. That's actually probably not unreasonable. It's always the people who but are looking at porn claim that it's not. Unless it's... No. Um. So, yeah. Find out later. No, I don't want to find out later. That's not even a thing that I want to know. <laughs> it's not on. You made your promise, up. Luke. Uh, man, the shit I had to clean up in that virtual room after Ollie last week. Fuck, man, that was just the hell. <laughs> Jackson Pollock painting with a black light. <laughs> that was just wrong. Right. Uh, anywho, expect shared spaces. Yes, yeah, shared spaces. They're, they're going to be restricted for uh, for Mr. Ollie in the future. But uh, anyway, that's fair. We um we have some some stuff to talk about. We've got lots of games to talk about tonight, as per usual. Guys, I would like to uh, take the lead tonight and kick off with something that I finished during the week, if you are all amenable to that. Sure. sure. So I got Jinx. through the end of Wolfenstein, the new order, which I was hey, nice. super happy about. So um, I didn't um, sort of put a stack of time in since the last time I talked about it. It was kind of a bit sporadic because of other distractions, but I finally sort of sat down and, and hunkered down and, and got through the, the last bit of it. I, I, I guess I didn't really feel like rushing it because I was enjoying it so much. So I really wanted to sit down and, and have a, a good crack at it rather than just a spurt here and there. Um, but my overall impression of that game having finished without um, sort of covering anything that's too spoilery is that I was a massive fan of it to the point that I almost liked it as much as Doom. So, Whoa, wow. yeah. you, you raved the shit out of Doom I, as well. Yeah, I did. I loved the crap out of Doom. And to, to put a contrast between the two of them, I think that mechanically Doom has the edge because it's obviously a bit more polished and it's the one that came second. Mm-hmm. Um, it does feel very similar in parts. Like the, I mean, machine games and id software um, have obviously sort of worked on a lot of the the engine stuff to make it, you know, very, very similar to each other. Um, the big differences with Wolfenstein is that Wolfenstein is a little bit less mobile, but a lot more story driven. So the actual character stuff and the story ah, stuff okay. is huge in Wolfenstein. So, yeah. Um, and it does a, f- a few things really, really well, like the portrayal of humanity in particular, like the the freedom fighters that are basically, you know, part of the uprising against the Nazis who have taken control. They're, they're really done in a, a careful, well thought out manner that makes all of the characters, including the minor ones that don't necessarily um, sort of last till the end of the, the story, all of them matter. Like you actually do give a shit about just about all of them, which is impressive. Ooh. That's, yeah, yeah. I was say that's not an easy thing to do no. in any story. No, it's George not. George R. R. Martin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, to the extent that you know, there's even um, some real sort of love and tenderness and sex scenes and that sort of stuff in there. That's not like wedged in for the sake of it. It's actually very tastefully yeah. done and to sort of support the character development, which is really good. So I was genuinely shocked by all that stuff. It was not the well, sort of thing I expected in a FPS of this nature. So to continue your Doom comparison, how does the soundtrack hold up? Not as good as Doom, obviously, because it's probably the best soundtrack of all time. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, just checking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, it's good. Um, I'm not sure if Mick Gordon did the Wolfenstein one. Um, I'm going to say probably not because I I don't recognize any of his trademark sort of uh, uh, styles. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, not that he has a strict trademark because the guy's so versatile, it's just crazy. But, um, I mean, it was very good. It just wasn't remarkable. I wouldn't sort of, you know, 
put this game on a pedestal because of its sound um, more than anything. That's so, it. yeah. How long did it end up um, playing for? Um, it was a good length of time. I think I probably spent a good 20 to 25 hours in it. So Wow. That's actually, yeah, that's very reasonable. Yeah. I mean, the actual level count in the end, I think, was only around the uh, 14 or so. I'm probably, I've probably got that wrong by a few, but it's around that amount. Mm. Um, it felt a bit longer than Doom, put it that way. And, of course, all the padding in yeah, between the levels. I'm trying to remember levels. how long Doom was, actually. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you, you blitzed through it a lot quicker than I did, which is kind of funny because I ignored a lot of the hidden secret stuff too because I was just running around shooting stuff. So, um, But, yeah, no, the um, the ending of the game was quite challenging. The, the difficulty level certainly ramped up in the last few levels and there were some, uh, you know, big um, baddies that uh, were a bit out of the ordinary, which made things interesting, which is kind of cool. Um, and I am very, very super pumped for Wolfenstein The New Colossus now that I've seen where the story of this one ends because it is quite the cliffhanger. So... Yeah. Uh, it starts with you in a wheelchair, according to the trailers. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I don't know if they're going to recap the events of the previous game when they start off the second one. I think they should. Because- oh, I imagine they'll at least be like a, do you remember back when we did this in this place, which will reference to the first game a bit? Yeah. It would be that, nice probably. in case I don't get around to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I guess... You know, the only thing you would you'd gather from what the footage we've seen so far is that the main character is injured in some way, and you know that if that's all you know, I guess that's probably enough. But yeah, all the other stuff would be quite interesting too. I think so. I hope they do. I hope they do. I'm really curious to see what if any characters sort of pull through from um, the first game into the second one too, because um, yeah, it's uh, they they could basically push it in any direction. It, it's very interesting. Hmm. So. Mm. So yeah, that's about all I can say without spoiling anything. So I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> but if my you... God, self restraint. Yeah, oh, it's, it's what is hard. This new paradox of Luke. <laughs> it's real hard. It was a real good game, Ollie. It was a real good game. I think you in particular would really enjoy it. So I probably would. Yeah, I'm not even going to mm-hmm. hesitate in that regards. The matter is having the time to sit down and actually play out a actual chunky FPS game at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, I mean, sometimes you just want to run around and shoot stuff and, you know, doing it with dual-wielding shotguns seems like a pretty cool way to spend your time doing games like this. So. I mean, there's definitely worse ways of shooting things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have um, heard that apparently in uh, the new Colossus, you're going to be able to um, switch which weapons you dual-wield, so it won't have to be Tri-wield the shotguns. <laughs> no, no, you'll be able to run around uh, with on your like wheelchair, a pistol. One in each hand. You'll be able to run around <laughs> with like a pistol and a machine gun, like something short-range in, in one hand mm. and something long-range in the other hand. So yep. that'll be very, very cool. Looking forward to that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, the other game that I got a chance to uh, sink a bit of time into is one that you got to play around with a bit um, uh, about a month ago, Ollie. So, uh, yes. remember Sundered? Remember that I thing? I do. Yeah. So it's yeah, out it's now. good. Yeah. Yay. It's cool. Um, so I, um, I had a bit of a run around in that. I haven't spent huge amounts of time in it yet, probably about two or three hours. And I have some some really strong thoughts on the game in terms of the positive stuff, and I've got a couple of pretty strong negatives about it as well. So, oh, really? Yeah, okay, I'm yeah. curious to hear these. Well, th- this is very surface level sort of scratching. Like, I-, I need to spend more time in the game to kind of solidify where I land on a couple of these things. But okay. the, the the positives are pretty obvious. I think you know it's a beautiful looking game. It's uh, you know the hand drawn oh, yeah. art style is incredible. Um, I actually just today put up a, a bit of a hot take video on uh, the opening 20 minutes or so of the game. So if anyone's curious to see what the thing looks like and, and plays like, you can uh, hop onto Shades our YouTube plug. channel at uh, youtube.com slash channel game and check that out. Um, so it gives you a pretty good impression. But the gameplay is great. It feels really smooth. I like the combat. The problem that I'm finding, Ollie, and I don't know if you got this when you played it, is that there is a lot of the game that seems to be a bit repetitive. Yeah, no, I, I could definitely see that being a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I have I faith that. that it's going to be spaced out with, um, like, the mini boss encounters and the boss encounters and some of the story mm-hmm. elements. Like, the, the narration that you get as you're running around, like, there's actually, I, th- I assume it's your weapon, like, some sort of spirit in your weapon, I'm not entirely sure, um, that's basically, you know, narrating as you go and it's speaking in this weird otherworldly language, which is really, really cool and atmospheric. That, that keeps things interesting, but because parts of the levels are procedurally generated, um, apart from the main sort of key chambers that have uh, items in them, the, mm. there's this sort of, there's this gameplay loop which has you kind of like treading the same ground again and again and again, and the enemy enemies randomly spawn too. So you could be like exploring down one passage, find a dead end, double back, and then all of a sudden stuff spawned behind you and you're just like, oh, what the fuck? Come on. So... Yeah. yeah, to be fair, Ori had that as well, the enemies respawning. But they weren't random. They were all sort of 
positioned. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, I get, I get what you mean now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is that it adds, like, time burn to the game that seems unnecessary. Like, it's just yeah. combat for the sake of combat. It feels like padding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it feels exactly like that. Um, the, I mean, the combat's satisfying. It feels really good, like, especially when you start upgrading some of your abilities and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, getting your double jumps and the way that you actually attack with your um, uh, sort of sword-type weapon is really cool, depending on whether you're in the air or, or on the ground or, or whatever. But you, after you've done so many of the same kinds of enemies again and again, it does just have that kind of grindy feel to it. Um, and yeah. that leads on to the second thing, which is the ability tree. Like the way that you upgrade your character is very rogue light in fashion with how you, when you die, you actually get to spend your ability points. So the game kind of rewards you for dying and upgrading, but mm. by dying, you're then going through that same ground again and hence the repetitiveness issues. So it's a bit of a catch 22, if you get what I mean. Um, and the upgrades yeah. for the character are very incremental to the point where, like unless you're getting major sort of uh, abilities, it feels like you're not actually improving a lot about you. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, overall, I still am really positive on the game. Don't get me wrong. Like I like the hell out of it because I think that its um, faults can be hidden under the the really satisfying sort of feel of the gameplay. And, you know, the the style of the world and the, uh, the art and all that sort of stuff is definitely a, a high point. But it's not as perfect as I hoped it would be, I guess, is where I'm getting That's to. Fair. So I yeah. think I didn't play it enough to come across some of that grind element. Like, I only, I barely played it for, like, just over an hour or so, I think. So I definitely didn't encounter that. Mm-hmm. But I can, I can fully see going, like, remembering what it was like, how you could find that. So hopefully it does clear up. I hope so too. Like, nice. I'm, like I said, I'm only about two or three hours in. So, you know, that's very, very early impressions. I have heard that the game has a decent amount of uh, content in it, like up around the, the 20 to 25 mark. So, which is good for a game of this nature. I think, you know, an indie title mm. like this, um, that, that's a good amount of gameplay. So, yeah, we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll report back on that one. So, um, <laughs> speaking of reporting back, uh, how's the, uh, the sky weeding going, Jam? What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. You haven't been to see it. I don't think anyone's logged on in a while. Although I, I saw someone I logged on briefly cleaned out. And then got distracted by Wolfenstein. Yeah, the cobble. <laughs> oh, yes. I saw yeah. someone clean out some of the cobble. Um, it's going really well. So I'm focusing on the gardening and the animals. So I've got beautiful little fenced off grassed areas. I figured out how to make the baits. So I'm starting to breed all the animals and I'm <laughs> selectively breeding the googly-eyed ones, huh? and killing off the non-googly-eyed ones wherever possible. All right, so there's you should see the chicken pro- pro- program. It is freaky. So the weird uh, Minecraft creature skins that this thing has in it, uh, they are actually able oh. to be manipulated, are they? Like you can sort Well, of- it appears there's a higher chance of them breeding a googly-eyed baby when they have the googly eyes. Oh, okay. um, they're certainly increasing in number. And then the rabbits, so I had a... Uh, an ordinary rabbit and then a rabbit with a top hat and a pipe. Mm. First time I bred them, they ended up with a little bunny in a top hat and a full tux. Oh. The next one oh, had so the cute. same plus a little monocle. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so dear. cute. So I'm trying to breed, a, whenever I breed the rabbits, a costumed one with a plain one just to see what pops up. And so far they're all getting costume elements to it. So, yeah, it's it's cute. I've got a little desert plot for my cacti and sugar cane. I've accidentally discovered that if I throw some chicken shit on the ground, it pops up with flowers and grass. Yeah. And when I punch that down, I get uh, seeds that I haven't seen before that aren't in vanilla Minecraft. So I've got barley and cotton and corn and hemp growing now. Mm. I've made a beautiful dojo-looking place out of sort of paper walls to store a whole bunch of our stuff, like mostly food-related and plant-related stuff. Yeah, I've just been having fun pottering around mm. and just prettying up the place, like extending our plot for growing trees and whatnot. So mm. I like it. It's it's brainless fun and I always loved, you know, landscaping and, and designing new areas. So having the entire sky <laughs> to do what I want with is pretty amazing. Yeah. I had a thought the other day. I'm actually really curious when they release the um, 
the 4K super duper graphics pack for um, for Minecraft, uh, like with the updates coming this year. Oh, it's going to be yeah. so creepy. I wonder whether that's actually going to support Sky Factory. <laughs> It'd be cool if it did. They I might update it their mods. Yeah. But yeah, that'd be interesting. It generally takes a while for the mods to catch up to that because there's just oh, there so, so many. many assets that yeah. they have to yeah. update. And it's down to the individual creators to do that as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, we'll see. That's usually been the case with Minecraft mods. Yeah. Could be interesting. Yep. And uh, Mimo, I know you've been pretty busy IRL, but uh, still potting away with a bit of Hearthstone from what I've seen on the, the Battle.net. Yeah, it's yeah. been pretty good. Been cool. Are you, uh, are you yeah. ready for, for the expansion? Is that something you, you're looking forward to? I am not prepared. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, sort of. I, I kind of logged back on to see what was going on and the, the Flame Festival is finished and now it's, you know, preparing for the, the big expansion. And so what they've done is gifted me with it like a free arena pass, basically mm. an arena where you, you know, draft cards together and you fight against people, a certain amount of wins. But if you do that, you then also complete a quest, which gives you a free pack to open when the new thing comes out. Yeah. And then, so much to my surprise, I completed that just thought, Oh, I'll just go and lose three games because that's my arena experience in Hearthstone. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it gave me a free pack and it gave me another pass to the arena. So I feel like I can just keep doing this and farm me some packs so mm. that I don't have to spend any money. Yeah, that That's sounds legit and cool. It's so then you'll get, like, the point of view of me, like, just playing the game for funsies and not putting any money into it, and then the point of view of Luke, that he spends more money on Hearthstone than he would on a AAA title. Uh, yes. So... Yes. <laughs> I, no I, I may have just spent $80 on the uh, pack <gasps> expansion. Oh, my gosh. Lucifer, that's too much. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. I, look, See, it just bugs me about Hearthstone. Like, you shouldn't, like, oh, it just bothers me. <laughs> it, it may bother you, but when you think, of, when I think about the number of hours of enjoyment I get out of this game, I don't even hesitate. Like, it, don't justify your shame, Luke. <laughs> that's not shame oh, at all. Wow. <laughs> Remember that, Luke. Fun your wrong. fun is wrong. Uh, <laughs> Remember no. that. No it's, it, no, it's frustrating. Like, that's fine. And I guess, you know, everyone pays their own thing. But I'm playing the game for free and for fun. And I'm going up against people who are opening, like, 100 packs every expansion. Mm -hmm. And that, the game's just the not equal. Yeah. I, I think one of the big differences between the way I play and the way that you do, though, is that I, I sort of build really competitive <laughs> decks for all of the classes, whereas you focus on one or two. So that yeah. is probably the big difference when it comes to the spend. Like, you could easily free-to-play account and focus on a couple of classes and do really well. Like, you don't have to... You know, spend oodles of money to to get good at you know everything essentially. It's easy, so. Imogen. It's mm. so easy. It's totally Just get easy. Good. Yeah, apparently mm. so. Mm. <laughs> Play more Murlocs. Mm. <laughs> No. Yeah. Um, I actually saw today, just as a, a brief aside, that uh, Blizzard has made all of the legacy packs from the previous expansions that had gone off the um, the on uh, the in-game store. Um, they're available again now, but you have to buy them off the um, Battle.net uh, site instead of actually in-game. So, which is oh. kind of cool. So you can you can actually go back and get oh. a lot of those um, packs that are now um, cards that are only used in the wild format. Um, you just have to go onto the site to do it. So that was a good. Out of workaround. curiosity, are hmm. they cheaper than what they were? Or are they the same cost as before? Uh, no, they're the same cost, and I think that the reasoning for that is probably uh, because when you disenchant them, you still get the same dust rate. So, oh, of course, yeah, yeah. that would make a lot of sense because they they can't really make they could abuse yeah. that. Uh, we are going to roll from what we've played into a bit of a new segment. It's still going to be news, but not as you know it. We are going to instead of reading off the list of news, and a lot of you guys that listen already are quite good at finding your own news because the internet is a thing. We decided that we'd concentrate on stories that we found interesting and we'd bring them and sort of share them with each other and have a bit of a chat because we think that what you guys come to listen to us for is for not for our opinion necessarily, but definitely the arguments. And so <laughs> <laughs> this segment will allow us to do a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm we've not been known it. for having opinions. That's that's not us at all. <laughs> no, no, totally not. Totally not. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, my opinion on your Hearthstone money. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to kick it off. And what I wanted to talk about this week uh, was that PS4 uh, have released their limited edition Dual Shock controller for Destiny 2. Uh, and it looks cool? Mm. Question mark? Does it? <laughs> All right. Okay. So <laughs> this limited edition controller that's coming out. Number one, I think it's kind of cool. Like, if you're a really big Destiny fan and you're going to be investing in buying the game and all those types of things, then this is probably for you. And buying extra controllers is just a thing. I think themed controllers is pretty cool. Although it does just look like they've got some stickers out of a box and stuck it on a white <laughs> controller. Like, I'm not seeing yeah. it. Like, I'm not seeing the 
the limited edition side of it. It's definitely a, definitely a Destiny it? controller. Um, I don't actually know. They've just announced that it will be released. Um, okay. It's also not a released in uh, Australia and the US, I believe. I don't think it's going to be coming out in the UK at the moment. Mm. Um, Stuff you, Britain. I don't think they, usually, of- they don't usually charge extra for those special um, consoles and controls, though, do they? They're usually just limited stock at the same price, from what I understand. Limited I stock, um, and asking. they're also mm. releasing bundles. So um, the Jet Black and Glacier White uh, PS4 Pro bundles will come with Destiny 2 mm. now. Ooh. Um, the game expansion pack and premium digital content... Uh, such as a legendary sword and an emote, because we all love those dances, yo. Mm. Uh, Hells yeah, get my moves on. <laughs> and uh, in, in Europe, it'll also the Destiny Two bundle comes with the standard PS4 as well. So the pricing is not announced for any of those or the controller as yet. It says in this article here, but it's basically a white controller with some gold stickers on it, mm. and it says Destiny Two on it. I don't know. I think generally this is pretty cool. And I guess if you're into collecting things, I saw um, an Instagram story somebody put up with like it actually in the Sony uh, Australia offices of all of the different limited edition consoles and the controllers. And I thought that was pretty cool. Mm. Would you guys mm. ever or have you ever bought a limited edition console or controller? Would you be tempted to? Like if there was a Legend of Zelda limited edition Switch, Luke, would that? Oh, you're, re- you're really looking for my buttons, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're really not that fair, hard though. to find. Yeah. yeah, well, like a switch, I think is different because like ocarina shape. You're going to have it out of the dock and actually in your hands, whereas mm. another console, like As a opposed PS4, to a controller. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. see, I don't know. Like a, a console, a, like a standard console that's going to sit in like a cabinet under a TV or something like that, or even you know away from where your eye is going to be as you're playing. I don't really give a crap about because you're not going to kind of look at it, and you know. Who cares? Yeah, it's not a display piece. Exactly, exactly. Like, in, unless your gaming area is set up so that it is a display piece, which you know, I think you'd be in the minority yeah. if that Some was. Some people the case. have that. Yeah, um, not con- many, but controllers are a, a bit different. Like, but if I'm being honest, I don't really care too much for the custom controllers either. One of the problems that I've got with um, custom controllers, especially of the nature of this Destiny one, is that I have seen a number of them depending on. Um, how they're done, like some of the the symbols and special stuff that they put on them, if it's anywhere around where the grip is, sometimes it can rub a bit and not sort of maintain its oh, new look. Oh, I see. So if there was like a tactical yeah. element the to wear. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly this Destiny controller, like I looked at it and immediately I thought to myself, yeah, that's exactly where I would not put those, like to, to stop that sort of thing from happening. Like solid colours yeah. I don't think tend to be a problem. Like it's not like those old um, TV remotes with the silver casing that, you know, rub off and go black after a while, like with the plastic underneath. Really? Yeah. I don't think I contact the controller there. Um... I don't, I'm holding well, a controller yeah, the Destiny in my hand one, right it's on now. the front. The yeah, first party the ones, ones are, are on generally front. pretty good, it, you know. Mm. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I just don't care too much for I, I, I would rather ugly. have a nice case. Um, like the for Destiny one yeah. is definitely not my cup of tea. I agree with you, Jim. <laughs> I, I nearly caved and got the R2-D2 Xbox. Did not want the C-3PO controller that it came with. Oh, yeah. It came out. That was hideous. <laughs> but the r 2 box was so cute and it made his little noises when it powered up and down. Mm. Aww. But... I just didn't, I wouldn't have been able to show it off. So it would have been pointless and I already had an Xbox. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a near miss. Yeah. Ollie, you don't yeah, own I, consoles. I would bought, you be tempted no, to No, I buy? have bought a limited edition console. Oh. I'm the only oh, one that, which that one? has. I bought the Super Mario Maker. Um, uh, we, <laughs> incorrect. I bought a special edition console. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, well, you, you kind of <laughs> fell into it, Imogen. I yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, lucked out. <laughs> yeah. I lucked out. But yeah, sorry. You bought the Mario Maker Nintendo. Um, Wii U, yeah. Oh, that's right. You bought it. It, was, it came in that huge box. See, yep, that's it was the thing a I like about it. Box. Like, I think Nintendo, I think you're right with the Switch. I feel like Nintendo like has that kind of nailed like that's the market those are the people who want their limited edition because those are like smaller units as well so they tend to be on display mm. whereas the limited edition xbox i've got is very pretty and i've got the halo 5 guardians limited edition xbox mm. one um and i have it because uh something happened with my original shipment and it was close to christmas and so they upgraded me to that which is really cool it has a really cool like turn on turn off sound it has a matching yeah. like limited edition controller and it's all silver and blue metallic and i actually really like it when i got it out of the box because i put everything in a cupboard i thought i really want to put this on display but it's huge mm. both the <laughs> ps4 and the xbox ones they're huge units and so 
you know, especially what's a Gears of War is like that big red PlayStation as well, or mm. and, and the Xbox, and it's got like the big scratch on the top of it and all of that kind of stuff. It would just, it's a lot. It's a big statement sort of thing. But I feel like limited edition controller should come with, you know, be a better controller than a regular one, not just some stickers and in white. Mm. <laughs> that yeah, would that's be fair. my sort of overarching. Especially because now you can buy customized controllers. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's some great places out there that will do customized controllers. There's some really cool ones at PAX last year. That purple one jam that we saw for the yeah. PlayStation was so pretty. For the Xbox um, One, I think you, if you had a custom controller, you'd want it to be the Pro controller. Like, because that controller, yeah, I've felt that in my hand, and it's a really nice controller. Um, it is. It yeah. has its own flaws. Like, mm. I have a an Elite controller, and it's just yeah. Sorry, the Elite. It, it's, not the it's Pro. really, yeah. but it's 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 definitely weighty, and so. It is still an adjustment. Mm. But yeah, I feel like limited edition should be like, I don't know, extra features. Maybe it makes a weird noise that we don't know about yet. It's only it just announced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the <laughs> I don't sound, know what a the sound destiny of your heart noise breaking is. when you drop it accidentally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe Dinklebot starts talking to you. Oh, oh, you've had Dinklebot? Dinklebot. <laughs> limited edition Dinklebot controller? I just reckon Peter that Dinklage would Just Peter Dinklage going, you've turned me on. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Press my buttons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. So limited edition stuff, but should also have something more than just color and stickers, I think is where we're at yeah. on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Oliver. Me. Go Pick for you. Me. So I saw a cool thing on the internet. So I do frequent a bit of Twitch and whatnot, and I've found a really cool thing where the Twitch grounds or the Twitch plays channel where it's the uh, com- the people watching put in the commands for the um for the bot that's playing the game to play so it follows the crowd's instructions essentially I'm still play fascinated at the mechanics behind that like I need to get my head around it at some point it's oh it's really cool mm. um they've done it before they've beaten like Pokemon Elite 4 in it and they've played some Dark Souls with it and stuff like that po- the Pokemon one looked took like over 300 hours just FYI mm. um but they type commands like W A S D to move around Z to go prone that sort of thing and they managed to get a bot to get third place in solo play Player Unknown's Battleground or PUBG, mm-hmm. which Amazing. is just fascinating. So cool. And does that some of the commentary is anybody amazing. besides me? <laughs> oh well, they played relatively conservatively and lucked out by um, ending up yep. in the circle, and then they were just crawling along the grass towards the end and got run over, yep. which was so sad. <laughs> It's like, they're going to make it, they're going to make it. And then just, you just see a car and they're like, no, 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 no. Oh, Gone. Squish. <laughs> but yeah, it was just a really fun, cool thing that I saw. I was like, that's a neat idea. And it got me thinking about um, PUBG in particular, but games as a whole, but mostly as far as PUBG is concerned. So PUBG, there is sort of like a, um, sort of like two strategy, I guess. There's the go hard or go home where you drop into a hotspot, murder a bunch of people, get all the good loot, and then, you know, try and win from there and there's the other one where you drop in in a remote location you build up your loot you sneak around you find the good spots and you just sort of wait it out essentially and be patient the patient hunter approach Mm. and i have to admit it was very funny i thought of this idea and then you guys linked me an article talking about this exact same thing a few hours later i'm like (laughs) i'm just meant to be a game journalist apparently (laughs) um and I have to agree with it. So the article was basically Battlegrounds is more fun when you try to stop winning. Now, I'm not going to say winning is not fun. We are biologically programmed to enjoy winning, so I'm not going to say that. Mm-hmm. Some like, of us more than others, yes. Yeah, no, exactly. But <laughs> overall, the greater the challenge, the more endorphin kick we out, get out of uh, success. That's just biology, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not saying don't try and win at PUBG. No, if that's your fun, then by all means, do it. But there's a lot of fun to be had about just trying cool new stuff and just having various like fun moments because the videos you see online are not like yeah i waited in this bush for 20 minutes and then headshot five guys they're the ones where it's like here's a bike it crests a hill it flies in through a window and then they shotgun (laughs) some dudes in the face or like here's a car it jumps over a building he flies out midair and shoots guys as he falls from the sky it's just (laughs) stupid shit like that and it's just so much more fun Mm. and it got me thinking about um the last game i played with jam actually which was we started off we started off playing the regular way and then i realized i had to go because i had real life nerdery (laughs) to do because i had to play my sunday role-playing game group that's right and so I ended up to being like, I fire my gun in the air to get attention. Jam, let's go Such here. Let's just twat. charge in. <laughs> let's oh go God. sort of thing. Hang on. Did you warm down about that before drop? you started firing your gun in the air? Or was that just a spontaneous like, thing? Uh, a little what bit. What was that? Oh, I'm just firing <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I was running over the shotgun. Boosh, boosh. 
Um, and they'd be like, oh, there's a crate. Normally, we very rarely go for crates. I'm like, fuck it, let's do this. <laughs> I ended up going for three for crates. It was and I ended up stupid. with like an M249. And we're just there running through the streets. I'm firing a gun in the air. Middle of the city. With my VoIP open, going, kill me. <laughs> And it was amazing. We didn't to anyone for such a long time. It we was made, like, stupid. Because you saw you and backed off Without and just went, this guy, this guy knows it's what he's trap. doing. It's a trap. <laughs> yeah, it's a trap. It's a trap. It was yeah, we ended up, fun. Oh, it was just a fun game. Mm. And yeah, I don't know if you guys agree with me. Like, yes, winning is enjoyable, but do you find that it's not always the be-all and end-all uh, of a game? Like, you have just as much if fun. The, yeah, if it was the be-all and end-all, I wouldn't play video games. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's that way. fair. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, because Me I'm either, shooting a lot of especially games. Especially with, with my <laughs> yeah. brother. I mean, my brother's currently sitting in solo PUBG. He's got nearly 50% win rate. Mm. I can't play games with him and expect to win them. <laughs> so I just play for shit and giggles. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, and, and as we said, like the, the game, the only game I've gotten chicken dinner in was one where we were just faffing around teaching a friend to play f- the very first time he played. Mm. Oh, we were not one, yep. expecting anything out of it it was just uh so here's the buttons Shout here's how your mark. inventory work yeah go mark you know there was zero expectations we were just having fun we were running around and then we're like okay so let's go here all right now we'll do this oh look there's some people down there we've got some you know ranged weapons let's have a crack suddenly we won like it's just it's it's fun to to share the crazy moments mm. much more than it is to stress about whether you win or lose mm-hmm. I think the other difference here is um, people who play the game sort of for their own ends versus the ones that play for an audience as well because the, the ones that are like streaming on Twitch and, and that kind of thing they, they actually want to create entertainment not for themselves but also for yep. the people yeah. watching so you know they'll, they'll approach the game very differently to you know the general public who want to try and get you know decent finishes so um, I think, you know, by the nature of that activity and what they're motivated by, I think they probably have more fun in the process at the same time. So, yeah, no, I completely agree with you, Ollie. I think, you know, there's a lot of truth to that for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm. There you go. That was my piece. Mm. No, I like it. Good, good, strong start. All right, Lucifer, so, you're next. Yeah, okay. There's this game that I like a bit called Metroid, right? And um, <laughs> I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about Super Metroid, but y- you guys know that there is the um, this Metroid Samus Returns uh I'm going to say remake, but it's a slightly different game coming out to uh, 3DS in a couple of months. Well, it's not strictly speaking a remaster because I've kind of built it from the ground up again and it's a little bit different. So, yeah. Um, So, anyway, Metroid Samus Returns coming to uh, the uh, 3DS in a couple of months. I believe it's in September that it's coming out. Now, this is really, really exciting. It, You know, the game looks fantastic. All of the screens and preview shots and everything that have been seen of it so far look absolutely spectacular. It looks like, you know, Super Metroid from the SNES days on steroids with really, you know, nice sparkly graphics and, you know, pushing the 3DS to the, the edges of its capabilities and that kind of thing. Um, but they announced something or, or something was leaked this week that made me pause and go, ooh, shit, that's not that good. And that is that the game's actually got Amiibo support, like a lot of the newer sort of Nintendo games do. You know, it's a thing that they do now. So there's the Toys to Life collectible figures that uh, you can attach to various games in the Nintendo Pantheon that, you know, unlock various different, you know, bits and pieces of content. The uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild being a good recent example. I think by the time that game finishes launching all of its various Amiibos, it's probably going to have about 10 to 12 of them, which is kind of nuts when you think about it. But... The, the way Amiibos work, like I haven't actually used a lot of them before. Ollie, have you purchased any at all with the um, Nintendo games that you've played? I actually have a few Amiibos, yes, because they're actually really good quality figures, okay. to be honest, as far as like collectibles are concerned. That, that I on one hand, I agree. I, I think the figures themselves are really nice, Like, and I, I wouldn't mind them mm. as collectibles on their own. Now, the way they function with games, up until now, I've been kind of okay with because it seems like they've unlocked stuff that is you know fairly inconsequential. Like It's, it's usually shortcuts or cosmetics, but... With Metroid, there's a Metroid Amiibo. Like, this particular Amiibo is, like, an actual, you know, the Metroid alien itself, so the, the you know, jellyfishy-type-looking thing. Um, the one uh, that they've actually released is it's actually got, like, a squishy body. Like, they've made it out of some sort of rubbery material. It looks really, really cool. Um, but I was going to pick this thing up regardless because it just looks awesome. But There's a Samus one as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There's one of each, which is really cool. Now, the, um, the Metroid one actually unlocks a couple of tools in this game, which surprised me. So one is that it unlocks a tool called the Metroid Marker, which allows you, it actually helps you to track and find nearby, nearby Metroids in the game, um, which, you know, is, is something that will give you quite a considerable advantage because that's one of the big objectives of that thing. 
Um, and it also unlocks what's called a fusion mode. So it's basically a ultra hard mode for the game. And that okay. is something that you only can unlock once you finish the game at least once. And you also have to have this amiibo to actually get to it. So um, okay. now the Samus Metroid, uh, Metroid amiibo is basically a zero suit version of Samus. And it unlocks a special reserve tank, allowing you to recharge uh, one of your energy um, sort of uh, resources. Um, and in addition to that, it unlocks an art gallery, which is, you know, fine. That's the kind of thing I wouldn't mind. Yeah. So here's my question to you guys. Do you, do you actually think that this is really problematic whether we're getting to the point now where the, the things that these additional accessories can unlock with these games are things that I would actually consider to be a lot more core in terms of how they mechanically interact with the game? Like they're no longer just the cosmetic add-ons or the, the shortcuts that we've seen with other stuff in the past. So I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Is it something we're oh. blowing out of proportion? As long as or? it's not multiplayer. Mm. Like, yeah. as long as it's your own game, then at least you're making the decision. Like, you know when you plug in your Amiibo, it's going to give you this extra thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you can make a choice. So you can own it, and then you can play through the game again with it or whatever else. So you can make that decision. But if it's, you know, multiplayer and some people have it and some people don't, so I think that's the equivalent of, like, a pay-to-win mm -hmm system i'd agree with that maybe i'll make just one comparison before we go any further so think about it in terms of game dlc so think think about the yep. sorts of games that have dlc that you actually think should have been included in the core game as opposed to having to pay for those extra add-ons so that's how i sort of view this so it's yep. dlc that is packaged within a collectible item as opposed to a digital download but the the end result is still the same like you kind of look at it and go well that should have been part of the game so yeah i don't know i don't know jam what do you yeah. think um, I'm trying to articulate it, but yeah, go jam. Mm. Well, is it similar to pre-order bonus material? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's similar to pre-order bonus material. I, I guess one of the catches it's with not far off, to be fair, with, with amiibos in particular, one of the catches is that there is a scarcity to these things. Like they tend to sell out really quickly, and um, you know, downloadable content for games is usually an infinite resource because it's digital. Whereas these, you would actually have to physically get hold of one of the things to unlock this extra content. And there's a pretty good chance, unless you're, you're pretty quick off the mark, that you'll miss out. So, but there's a similar... I mean, it, the same can be said for um, collectible special edition pre-orders mm. mm. um, that have linked content in-game. Battlefront you know, was a great a example of that. or whatever. But they're usually cosmetic um, items, aren't they? No. Han not necessarily. Battlefront. <laughs> Battlefront, you got Han Solo's blaster, which is the most OP thing in the game. Oh, yeah, that, I think that was it a is notable a exception, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think it is a problem. Like Imogen said, for multiplayer, it just it's an unlevel playing field. It creates advantage and disadvantage from the get-go, which is just not fun. Mm -hmm. Actually, Luke, okay, so in as far as Metroid is concerned, I would have very little issue with it because the, the ultra-hard mode, you have to be pretty dedicated if you want to go to that anyway, so... I can live with that. The art gallery, like you said, is just a cool cosmetic thing. Yeah. And the other one you said was a Metroid scanner, so it just sort of, what, clips it up on the map a bit more? Is that right? Is yeah, that I guess, I guess it gives you access to more game information, essentially, so... Mm. Okay. Then that doesn't sound too terrifying. Like, it sounds... Yeah, the, reser the reserve reasonable. energy tank is probably the one I'd have the biggest problem with out of all of those. Yeah, that... Mm. Yeah, but trust Nintendo to essentially monetize cheating. Mm. <laughs> it's very true. Mm. Mm. Like... If, if the people are going to do it, may as well make money off it. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I'm going to get these make things anyway because they're cool collectibles and, you know, because it's my favorite franchise of all time. Oh, they time. are very cool figs. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed by the fact that they actually exist in this fashion, I guess. So anyway, that's my little little talking point and gripe for the day. So, yeah. There you go. Mm. Oh, cool. All right. Last up in this new format is Jam. But not least. It's more. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if I can talk for two minutes straight. Um oh. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Overwatch because um, they've mm. just announced that the Summer Games is coming back on August 8th. Just in time for winter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ah. Southern Hemisphere. Um, it's, it made me think back to 2016 Summer Games. So that was the first event that was held in Overwatch. And it was a bit iffy, in my opinion. You can say naff. It's all right. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to you. I mean, the outfits, I wasn't eh. Uh, Lucio Ball, I had massive internet issues. I could not get a ping worth playing for. It was a bit of a non-event um, for me, but um, they had a little um, developers update addressing all of the content and changes that are going to be in it this time around. And I think it's really promising. I think it shows how much they've been listening to people. Some of it's uh, 
based on improvements that have happened over the last year as they've worked on improving with other events. Mm. Um, but the summer games this time around is going to be uh, – it sounds like it's going to be fun. Um, they've confirmed that previous skins from the 2016 summer games will be available and they'll be purchasable with the in-game points um, and cheaper than new new legendary skins would be, which is cool. So you can pick them up for like a 1,000 points. Mm-hmm. Lucio Ball is coming back with some changes and improvements, Woo. which I think is <laughs> good. It was a bit easy to <laughs> – Grief people in the last one because you could like boop goalies out and be really sneaky with the ultimate. Which Become used to, any hero. Yeah, that too. Um, but the Minor ultimate detail, used to yeah. drag the ball towards where you'd aimed at that. And they've changed that this time around so that it can be a little more competitive. You can no longer boop the other team. Hmm. And your ultimate just makes you sort of an epic Lucio for a short time. You become faster and jump higher and whatever rather than pull the ball. You become that way. Daft Punk Lucio. <laughs> Um, there's going to be some new skins. Uh, they did confirm that Junkrat's getting a legendary skin, which sounds awesome, and apparently Mercy too, and hers is supposedly quite stunning. Hmm. And I love that Junkrat's getting one because they've also announced that um, they're going to use the same stadium as last year but also introduce one that's based on Sydney, Australia. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so we're getting, f- we're getting a Aussies. venue in the game. How much you want to bet there's like a, an opera house and a harbour bridge and some kangaroos on there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the screenshot already has <laughs> a while in the, the cool post. The, yep. the yeah. opera house will be yep. in the background. I, I'm almost certain of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's in the yeah. screenshot, 100%. isn't it? 100%. Oh, is it? Oh, no. is it? Yeah. I didn't see it. I was just it's listening to it. House. Mm. Yeah. Ah, uh, excellent. Makes sense. Mm. And not only that, uh, what's really cool is for those people, because, I mean, there, it did get quite a following. Lucio Ball was pretty popular mm. amongst um, some groups. They're running a competitive Lucio Ball called. Copa Lucio Ball alongside just your ordinary one, um, and it's sort of ranked. You <laughs> you play cool. ten games, and once you've played ten games, you you know you can get a special spray for playing the competitive version. But if you end up in the top five hundred in your region, you will get another special spray. So it's like this neat little. That's kind yeah. of cool. Yeah, I think it's cute because some people are going to be mad keen for it, and they loved it the first time around. So mm. you know. We can let them all go there and then just yeah. play casually. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they're – because all of these, like, little events and things don't tend to touch the serious, hardcore, competitive guys. They're more interested in keeping their rank. So yeah. and making an event Whoa. that targets those people. I mean, Blizzard, every time, nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just they, – they, I would argue that uh, they don't target the hardcore people. Have you tried any of the Junkrat or um, the London one? on like ultra super just <laughs> die difficulty no very difficult they are incredibly difficult mm. <laughs> i think my favorite thing though is that they've confirmed yeah you know all of the the loot box uh improvements they've been talking about reducing duplicates and such that's going to that roll I'm out with this to. update so oh, we're going to see simo it's happening mm. You should <laughs> stop no more four duplicate sprays for Simo. Yeah. The, the anti-duplicates update for Hearthstone just went live today as well. So that's a, yeah, I'm already enjoying that for oh, the other game. solid. Yep. So, yeah, it's it's wonderful. We're going to actually, I think, be getting a lot more excited to be opening loot boxes. And I like it. I think each one of these things is a step in the right direction. Like, it's it's all building on and improving the game. It's really listening to feedback. And it's just, it sounds like it's going to be a much more successful event than last year. And, I mean, they've only been doing it for one year. Mm. It's quite impressive, really. Um, it would have been nice to see a different sporting event. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that's that's something they can always yeah. try for the future. Something for the future. I, I wonder if it's going to, like, the the things will follow. So the Halloween was to be a Junkenstein-based story and those types of things. Or oh, and they just tweak it. Mm. Well, yeah. they've got new like, characters the next they can chapter. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That'd be cool. Mm. Mm. No, I, I just wanted to say, like, um, I mean, Lucio Ball, I'm glad that they're including that. I don't give a shit about it personally, but that they've got it as cool. The the one thing that I like about doing summer games again is actually the one thing I think is probably the biggest problem with it, and that is making the um the cosmetics from last summer games available again. So, like, for me, I love having a second chance to to bite at that cherry and get some of the skins and stuff that I missed. Um mm. but 
I, I have to think of it on one hand that if they have positioned this last year as these skins being like a one-time event pickup and people are potentially spending money on getting loot boxes to pick those skins up and then all of a sudden the value of them is depreciated because they've made them available again a year later, that's got to suck for the people that went out of their way last year to get them. So No, it's a full 12 months. I disagree. The fact that you're introducing new content, which is going to outshine the old content, means that the value's reducing anyway. I mean, you have a full 12 months to show off that you got it the first time around. I like that they're reintroducing the content. There are skins yeah. I've missed in other events that I really, really want mm. that I wasn't prepared to spend cash on. And so my, you know, I'm resorting to the hope that 12 months down the track, it'll be available again for me to yeah. try again. It's a full 12 months. It's quite a that while. That was me with the Halloween skins. I was there going, okay, I really want these to... yeah. I'm out. All right, I'm going to bank on them. Me going to be able to get them next Halloween. Mm. And some Christmas so, ones. like Yeah, I just, some of the Christmas ones I missed that I really would have liked would to have gotten. It would be sad for them to be locked away for, for good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Especially because they're, they're in the hero, hero gallery teasing you constantly. Like, you've yeah. had me. You weren't fast enough. Plus, for those people that are just picking up the game before. Yeah. Um, These, like, oh, after these came out, that's a bit of a punch in the dick or vag at that point. <laughs> Plus, like, I'm equal made, opportunity, sorry. They've made equal all of these improvements punches. to the loot box drops, and they're also, it sounds like, going to be introducing soon the um, ability to uh, get more credits in lieu of a duplicate so that, you know, you're compensated a little better. All of that means that the, the loot box balance and system now is a vast improvement on what it was before. So yep. let's bring those back for those people who perhaps got gypped the first time around mm. <laughs> so yeah. that they can have another crack. Or just weren't there. Yeah. yeah. And and the brand new ones, they're, they're going to be, you know, the the key ones to get, like the, the fancy ones. They'll be more expensive and I'm guessing more difficult to get. So people will be showing those ones off. It's shiny and fancy. Mm. No, sounds good. Exactly. Sounds good. Right, so leading neatly into our topic of the week, which of course is Party Game of the Month, we are this month reviewing what, Jam? What's on the schedule? We are reviewing Cluster Truck. <laughs> so that went out uh, last month after our last yes. review, and we've been playing it some and been getting rather competitive. Um, a lot of people have probably already seen <laughs> some of the footage. Cluster Truck is... Just, oh my God, it's insane. You just run through a bunch of levels, jumping off the back of trucks, truck to truck to truck, just to get to the end uh, with all sorts of obstacles and crazy shit happening on screen. It's developed by Landfall. It's got a bit of a following on Twitch um, because the developer actually, when they find a live Twitch stream, occasionally jump on and start messing with that person's stream, which I think is fantastic. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like hallucinogenic colours and all sorts of stuff, messages on screen. It's hilarious. It's such a wonderful way to get involved with your fans. That's when awesome. they're one way to build community. Swearing at the screen because this game is rage-inducing. Oh, my God. I'm trying God. very hard not to swear right now. Yeah, it, it, I had swear. So Ollie's been playing the, the whole time we've been... <laughs> recording today i have bruises on my thumbs um so essentially starting on the back of this ordinary looking white truck at the beginning of each level and there's a path of sorts in front of you and other trucks and you're just going to jump across them to the end line and i mean it's it's that simple to start with but holy crap does the game throw some curveballs at you each uh set of 10 levels it'll introduce a new theme and usually a new mechanic, one of the coolest and scariest of which I've seen so far is lasers. Mm. Oh, and, F those lasers. <laughs> and then over the 10 levels, it'll get progressively more difficult by using that mechanic in different ways and, and teaching you how you might be able to avoid it, you know, by through failure, essentially, until on the 10th level <laughs> of each set, it's just a nuts run of shit flying at you and trucks tipping over it's madness it's all about speed running it's quite simple graphics but i think it's really really effective because it feels like just this huge vast space but that tiny tiny little rectangle of a truck is like your lifeline because if you're you around you're dead mm. start again this is this is my truck there are many like it but this one is mine <laughs> yeah 
So um, we've been playing it all on Steam. It's currently $15 US, but I think we got it on sale mm. during yeah. the Steam sale. Yeah. We picked it up just in time <laughs> when we um, rolled it last. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. I don't know. What are you guys' first thoughts? Do you, do you know what my first thought was when I when I loaded this up and started playing? Was, uh, oh, my God, they tried to make a game of the freeway chase scene in Matrix Reloaded and it was nowhere near <laughs> oh. at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good little analogy. Yeah, it is. It's exactly like that without the hand-to-hand combat and the the cool sort of techie stuff. It's uh, you know, it reminded me a lot of the the platforming over those moving vehicles. So yeah, I I think um, I don't know. It's certainly a game. <laughs> it is. I mean, and it's so it's so simple in principle. You don't have many buttons. Mm. So you you've got your um, the direction you're viewing, which can change the direction that you're actually flying in when you're mid air, mid jump. You've got a jump button. You've got like a sprint button, which lets you move a little faster along the back of the truck to get a run up for a bigger jump. And geez, is that it? That's oh, it. And yeah, move, what's that, and jump. You acquire points, and that eventually you can purchase upgrades. One of which can be active at any time. So I've only purchased one upgrade, the double jump, hmm. and I did that. I can't even remember when. Maybe in World Four ish. No, um, you purchased that when we were playing. So that has to be at least World Two. Two, three, yeah. Okay, so maybe it was earlier than I thought. It's a, yeah, it's a little extra <laughs> bit to help you get along, but it's amazing the things the game throws at you unexpectedly um, to have you panic. It's it's sort of a rare thing to get through a level on the first go because there's usually something unexpected because you fly... Some level of witchcraft. Mm. Yeah. Well, you get so used to flying in a single direction, dodging obstacles, that suddenly it'll, you know, curve a level or it'll tell you you have to actually jump off the side, drop down and land on a perpendicular road of moving trucks. All sorts of things. There's hammers and wheels that you have to jump around or through that are smashing and shifting the trucks they're colliding right with now. one another you get um bonus points for doing neat things like jumping off a truck that's in the air or one that's upside down if you don't quite get the truck but you're sort of hit the tip of the back of the truck you can still scramble and it gives you a bit of a boost to your jump there's little things that you pick up as you accidentally mess up that can help you. That that pulling yourself back up up off the edge of the um the truck when you sort of nearly make the jump but not quite. That reminded me a little bit of the jumping mechanic in Doom actually. So <laughs> oh the ledge jumps. Yeah, like a yeah. Bit of a launch pulling yourself thing. up off them. Uh, not not the launch part, just the pulling yourself up bit. So uh, yeah. You can also um, shift down forward to the front of the truck and stand on the cab, which is a little lower. Uh, if you need to get under obstacles that you're having trouble jumping over. Oh, um, I'm so close so to the finish. There's there's a few. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Imogen and I bought it and installed it together. And we, just the first few sets of worlds. <laughs> it was just so much swearing. I was swearing so much because for the longest time, I had trouble changing direction mid-jump. Mm. I was playing. I've played the whole time with an Xbox controller. And for some reason, my muscle memory, which is usually pretty good at picking things up quickly was just having difficulty getting the accuracy I needed. And I don't know if it was the sensitivity, but I was loath to change it because I like learning, I don't know, you know, the, the default patterns. settings. Mm. Yeah. And and I, I thought if I changed the sensitivity, then I'd have to start relearning again. So I stubbornly stuck with it. But, oh, my God, I was so frustrated. I've There are very few games that just create instant anxiety in me like this one does because it's so easy to just slip and fail. Yeah. And you're just constantly mashing restart to try and get it. And then you finally get it. And you just feel like a god. And it goes without <laughs> saying that if you fall off a truck and hit the ground, you are dead. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. Although like I, I did, did say that. Really frustrating. Good. Are you still on 8.9? Uh, no, I'm on 8.10. Damn it. Sorry. Okay, so I got up to 8.9. Ollie cheated and kept oh. playing while we recorded to get further ahead than me. That's cheating. I've decided. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was sure. getting quite competitive. I was really excited to um I'm very competitive as well, Jaham. How we got through the levels and and how well we ranked. So at the end of each level, when you eventually win, you see the score you got, which includes all of your little flare points. You can get airtime points um if you happen to fly through the air for longer than expected. 
you get the the time, which is the key uh, result that you're after, really. How fast can you get through these levels? Um, and it mm. ranks you. It ranks you globally. Um, so does that not... You can filter that down to your friends. I was just going to say, does that not work in the opposite direction, where if you sort of stay in the level without dying as long as possible, doesn't it give you a bonus as well? Like, can you actually turn around and I run backwards know, across the trucks? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, some levels, that's actually crucial. Mm. Okay. The, well, the trucks, the trucks typically... Are stationary for a moment to begin with, and then start moving. Mm. Yep. So yeah, going start backwards. Their engines. I've never actually turned around and gone backwards ground. though. Like I assume that they're oh, uh, you're finite usually on the, You will. Yeah. Don't worry, young Padawan. <laughs> you will. <laughs> but typically, the truck you're on is the rearmost truck. Oh, okay, right. And they start moving, and so your only avenue is forward. Mm. Typically, right. It's incredible. I love some of the themes. There's like. Forest levels and ice levels and steampunk levels and laser levels and sci-fi and medieval and they each have their own weirdness to it. The medieval one's like fortressy and it's got all of these like defense mechanisms. You've got swinging hammers and punching hammer things and oh, it's such a mess and it's chaos and I found it to be thoroughly enjoyable even though I was enraged. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's a, yeah, it's a good amount of challenge. It's, it's not a frustrating amount of challenge. Yeah, it's fun some, and it's... So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so some didn't quite think of them. What do you think, Imogen? Let's hear the uh, opposite side. Well, it's not exactly the opposite side. I still think it's a good game and I think it's, you know, for some people it's just not for me. Like, I don't I don't enjoy playing up against a wall. Like, that whole idea of, like, I'll oh, try this, okay, and I die. And then I restart and try it and I die. And then mm. it just comes to the stage where it felt like what I was doing was not having a massive impact because the randomization of the physics in some of the levels I was doing mm. seemed so to have like a bigger impact. So even punishment. if I got something nailed, then something weird would happen and I failed anyway. So it is rage inducing and some people see that as a challenge. I just don't find that fun. This is like that next level of what I hate about platformers. Mm. So mm. I think it's a very good game and I think it's definitely got a place. I love all of the stuff that's come out of the devs sort of dipping in and, and messing with people midstream <laughs> and, and all of that stuff. And I think it's really good. Um, and it, I'm happy that you guys are enjoying it, but it is a hundred percent not a game for me. <laughs> I, I can't play it for long at once. And I, I did notice too, there is um, definitely a random element to it. You can, yeah restart the level a number of times and have the trucks in a slightly different configuration or moving at different speeds or the obstacles um, interacting in enough of uh, a different timing format that it completely changes the way the trucks are rolling forward mm. and how close I completely or how agree. far they are to one another, which is excellent because otherwise it would just be really too routine trying to redo some of the more difficult levels. Mm. Um Again, the art style, I think it's neat for the most part. There's no background to the levels um, or very minimal objects outside of, you know, the narrow path that is your level to get from start to to the finish line. And that just, it, it does highlight that tiny, tiny little space in this vast, vast emptiness. There's such a small amount of space that's safe for you to land. It's it's daunting, but it's really cool. Mm. And I like the way they change the theme up every 10 levels. But I don't know how many. Does anyone have an idea how many there are total? I have no idea because I'm nowhere near as far as you guys. So, <laughs> uh. Oh, I'm going to see if I can find this. Mm. My, my um, thoughts on the game are almost the polar opposite of Imogen's, actually, which is kind of amusing because I think that despite that, we've ended up in the same place. So, Imogen, if, if from what I heard you say a second ago, you kind of – think that it's a good game that you didn't enjoy. Was that an accurate summary? Correct. All right. I'm kind of the opposite. I think it's a terrible game that I actually enjoyed. <laughs> so. Terrible. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a good game at all. Like, uh, to, all right. Explain out. The, the main thing for me is that it feels like a mobile game. So. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I was going to ask you if you guys felt it felt like an iOS game. Yeah, exactly like that. And for that reason, I think for a, for a PC platform, it doesn't feel like a good game. I, don't get me wrong, it's not... All right, I'm probably being a bit harsh on it because it's... It, it, it's For what it is, it's fine. Like, it does the job that it intends to do fine. Like, the physics seem okay. Like, the you know, for a game about running o across the back of speeding high, you know, semi-trailers and trying not to die, sure, it does that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it really is quite shallow apart from some of the random things that sort of uh, knock you about on different levels. It's... 
you know, you, you if you come into the game expecting anything other than a platformer on high speed trucks with random stuff on every level, you're going to be disappointed because that's exactly what it is. So it's just a floor is lava game. It is, it is. But that being said, like it's a kind of dumb amount of fun. Like I actually didn't mind it. Like it, there's a definite uh, drop off to enjoyment after a certain point. I think you know you only play it for a, a little while before it gets a bit repetitive and you you don't need to keep going with it. But I don't know. See, I do that out of sheer frustration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like I have to stop for my health mm. um, and probably my you know precious controller. S- someone help <laughs> me! I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't hate yeah, myself enough but- to keep playing it. Basically. <laughs> I, I appreciate how it appears to be a mobile game, but I don't think that um, I think it's a good prohibits idea, though, it being it mean... a PC game. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's it's different. It's fun. It's a neat little thing to pick up. Maybe I'm glad I got it on sale. Mm. I don't know if fifteen dollars is pretty good. I don't know how long the game is, um, but it might be hit and miss for some. Is that how much it is normally? Fifteen. Yeah, I US. would not pay fifteen dollars. Yeah, I was gonna. I, I think fifteen is a very overpriced for for what it is. Personally, yeah, yeah. So, I don't, yeah, maybe consider getting it on sale if you want to pick it up. Mm. Um, there's lots of footage out there of people playing. Um, it's rather enjoyable. I absolutely smashed one of the levels and it's that giddy excitement of seeing, you know, that I ranked in the top thousand. <laughs> that keeps me going because I'm like, yeah, I'm really good. I'm so good. I want to keep trying and do better. Mm. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hilarious because normally, you know, you're up around, I don't know, 50,000 or something ridiculous. Uh, a lot of people have played the game. But, yeah, it's it's enjoyable in spurts. <laughs> mm. Yeah, in bits. I could not play it for a very long time. I've been playing it now for over an hour and my left forearm hurts. Mm. <laughs> And not in a good way. It's not porn, guys. I'm actually playing the game. Uh-huh. It's not porn. It's just enjoyable yeah. in spurts, you know. Are you playing yep. with keyboard and mouse? Left. I am playing with keyboard and mouse because I hate myself. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, but it does make the looking around mechanic very smooth and intuitive. I intended to try, but I just, out of habit, picked up my Xbox controller to keep going. Mm. It's because you um, need that auto-aim assist. It's not auto-aim. Shut your face. It is in GTA. <laughs> yeah, but Sorry. not in this. It's a bit awkward, but yeah, I do find just because of how <laughs> focused and how hard I'm trying that my, my I bruise my thumbs hmm. on the joystick, which is terrible. It's kind of adorable, <laughs> kind of sad at the same time. Very sad. <laughs> Very sad. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just, oh my God, the cursing. It's, yeah, Imogen heard me. <laughs> my self-restraint right now is re- insane. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. Just sometimes it so, feels like it's arbitrarily just... The truck turned left, therefore you missed it. Yeah. Because, and you go, oh, God that's, damn it. Yeah. That's my biggest complaint that I'll mirror with Imogen, is the RNG um, behind the physics sometimes. You could do a perfect run, and the truck would be like, whip, and throw you off. You're like, well, that's great. I don't think it's Thanks. that arbitrary. It can be at times. Some levels I've done literally perfect, and the truck has decided to just go, now you know what, I'm going to wiggle a bit and throw you off. It's like, well... Fantastic. Uh, uh, hmm. And that's part it. of the random element. And I like and I, I like and I dislike it, but I dislike it more than I like it. And the reason for that is I dislike it because it fucks me over constantly. <laughs> I like it because it adds a random fresh element each time. So the run yeah. isn't identical. Agreed. So, and I'll compare this to my next platforming, you know, close to my heart thing, which is Mario Maker. And that game is always the same levels. They always run the same way. And you very quickly learn the patterns. I actually like that the patterns are a bit, little bit random. I don't mm. mind that because it means you're not just going, boom, I learned this exact pattern. Sweet. Nailed it. Like there is always that, ooh, will I stuff this up or will I get a good run? It, it adds that random element, which is, I think, necessary. Mm. Yeah. I feel like it goes a bit too much towards the random side. If it was a little tiny less wibbly with the physics, I'd probably enjoy it a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's just me. Hey, wh- what about if this game was uh, done in the same style as uh, Super Hot, <laughs> where you actually got to pause between jumps and that kind of thing? You think that'd be interesting? Oh, oh no. god, no! That would defeat the purpose game of VR. a speed run game. <laughs> oh god, that would be sickening. <laughs> uh, so, developers, if this game isn't available in VR, make it happen and Ew. just watch all the Twitch stream vomits. Mm. Oh, especially when they then do the hallucination stuff. Mm-hmm. That oh. would be. Fantastic. I would pay little... actual money to see that. 
there's a little bit of humor to the game too. Ollie, did you see? Um, I think it was level eight two. <laughs> you might not remember it. So it looks like the the finish line, which is like a ribbon that says goal on it. Yes, is very 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 close to you. Yeah. At the start of that level, and then yep. you get towards it. Yeah. It doesn't say goal. It says coal, and all of this like huge boulders of coal start smashing your way. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny. Yeah. There's some that fun got me, little... and I was like, "What are oh, you sons of bitches?" <laughs> yeah. I see some what you did there. Very fun little moments in the game so far. I I think there's a sense of humor, and ah, oh, I don't know. Uh, it's very evil <laughs> the way that yeah. they set some of these it's, levels up. Some of it is definitely vindictive, but in like a like, cheerful, vindictive way. Like, yeah. not as in like, like you're surprise, a bad person. You thought you had yeah, to go like, that way, Ha-ha, but that was really cool. That wasn't was it? death. Ha <laughs> ha. Sucker. Lol. You you have Enjoy to Enjoy them fail lasers, Mister Bond. <laughs> some levels to to figure out where you need to go because you're just jumping blind. <laughs> um, but it's cool. It's cool, and as long as I think individual levels don't take you too long to conquer. Yeah, I've been on this level for, for 20 minutes. <laughs> I can't believe you got through 8, 9. That just looked so difficult. So there you go, folks. You, you heard it here first. Cluster Truck, joyfully vindictive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Would recommend. Evil. I'm playing it during a podcast. It's actually the first game I'm, I've played through the podcast, <laughs> much to my fellow co-host, Shagarin. Mm. You just wanted but- to get further than well, Ollie, of course I want it to get better than We all know it. Ollie, you're going to have to take a break for a second. We require your uh, random number generating skills. Ah, uh-huh. you see, little do you know that I don't need to see the document, so I can just roll the dice and tell you a number. All right, that's fair. All right, so it is time to determine next month's party game of the month. So as we do every month, we have a list of games which have been submitted either by ourselves or by various different listeners. Um, and we keep that rolling and basically randomly select a game from the list. So, Ollie, tell us, how does a game yes. get on the list? Oh, God. Um, the game has to be recommended by our viewers. It has to be available for digital download because we're too lazy to go out into the sunlight and get burnt like vampires from Blade. Uh, it has to be under $30, question mark. Yep. It has to be have to get a good grasp of the game in about four hours, hopefully less than that sort of thing. So we don't want any massive JRPGs that the tutorial lasts for 100 hours, nothing like that, as fun as they are. Hmm. And... That's all that I can remember off the top of my head. No platform exclusives. That's the only other thing. So No platform exclusives, yeah. So it can't be like a PS4 or an Xbox One yeah. exclusive. It has to be available across all platforms. Un- unless it's a because PC. Because we're equal one. opportunity like that. Yeah, P- PC exclusives, okay, because we can all play it. So that's that's not a big yeah, deal. It's not really an exclusive at that point. No, no, not really. So, no. All right, anyway, we have the list. Uh, so Mimo and Jamie, you want to look at the actual list proper. And Ollie, you got your, your number generator handy? Yep, I smacked into a pulse. This is a good time. Nice. All right, give it a whirl. <laughs> I got a one. What's a one? Oh, good timing, man. One is, in fact, your pick. Is it? Which is... What is it? Da, 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 I don't even remember. Now, I actually don't know if this is the correct pronunciation. You may have to correct me if it's not, but it is uh, Jotun. Jotun, yes. All right. Hey, that's a cool game. Sweet. So this is actually... So backing off the Viking theme from Northgard, mm. we can now <laughs> play another Viking-themed game. Hooray. Mima will be very happy. I am. Well, this is by the same uh, makers of uh, Sundered, so... There you go. You can see what they cut their teeth on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm actually super keen to see uh, what, what that's like in comparison. Um, Jan, do you happen to have uh, Steam up in front of you? Can we do a quick... I'm bringing it up. <laughs> what she One said. moment, please. <laughs> also what she said. Oh, oh, God, this level is really difficult. Um, so it's $15 US on Steam, mm-hmm. and it describes itself as a hand-drawn action exploration game set in Norse mythology. Mm. Play a Viking warrior who died an inglorious death and must prove herself to the gods to enter Valhalla. Interesting, and that's so cool. Thunder Lotus Games, isn't it? That's the name of the developer. Uh, yes. Yep. Yes, it is. Nice. Well, if it's uh, you know anything as polished as uh, Thunder is, I'm expecting it to be to be quite interesting. So cool, good one. Yeah, it looks quite lovely. Yay. Yeah. I did a thing. Nice, nice. All right, well, uh, if you want to uh, tune in and listen to us uh, have a, a good play and review of that, then we'll be doing so in one month's time. Uh, but in the meantime, you can get hold of us in all the usual manners. So you can mail us at mail at partyloaded.com. We are on Facebook. Just search for Party Loaded. We're, of course, on Twitter at Party Loaded Show. You can find all of our episodes where people find podcasts on iTunes and all of our YouTube content on youtube.com slash channel endgame as well. So, um, yeah, 
That's that's it for this episode, essentially. Um, Actually, yeah. Question: Yo. Who recommended uh, Cluster Truck to us? Because I don't think we said it. Uh, it was recommended, I believe, by our local friend uh, Simo Adicott. So. Simo, yes. I hate you. Yep. You've ruined my two evenings <laughs> worth of games. Uh, yeah, Simo. Yep. I'm sure he'll be uh, interested to see how we all went with that one tonight. So, yeah. I want to see how he's gone in it, if it's his recommendation. Mm. I want to know where he got to. True. Compare scores. Calling you out, buddy. Mm? Calling you out. <laughs> all right. Well, plans this weekend, everyone. Anything interesting coming up? Um, uh, I might actually try uh, Le Wolfenstein. Mm, nice. I might grab it. Did you? You didn't pick it up on the sale then, I take it? I do have it. Ooh. I haven't played it. I have a lot of games bought Ditto. but not installed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thus is the curse of the Steam sales. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mimo, are you actually going to put an order in for this monster PC that you've been looking at? <laughs> is that a thing happening? It is a beast. I am. I won't have it by next week. The plan is to not buy it before I've finished my Masters so that I don't have a new PC that I can't use or shouldn't be using. Yeah, that's a pretty, Very pretty good idea. Yeah. That is a solid strategy. Let me buy this really expensive distraction. No! Yeah, exactly right. Screw that. So I won't have it um, until the end of, of August. So, um, But because of said things that I shouldn't be distracted from, I'll be playing Hearthstone. Mm. So. Guys, I just finished 810. I shit you not. Yeah, whatever. No, I'm not even joking, Jam. I'll send you the picture. No, don't believe it. Uh, anyway, we should probably leave it there. It's probably time for us all to truck off. So thanks for listening. We will see you again next week. Good night. Bye. Bye. Fuck you all. The Party Loaded Podcast is a Channel Endgame production. For this and more great gaming content, bookmark channelendgame.com. <laughs>